Hello everyone, my name is Fei, a PhD student from University of Leeds. Today, I'm going to introduce Intraslab Earthquake Harass first detect unrest as a combo volcano, Lausanne, Chile. Let's first give some introduction. The unrest or eruption triggered by earthquake has been suggested at many volcanoes around the world. Such events tend to involve either mega threat earthquake, whose magnitude above 7, or shallow moderate earthquakes, whose magnitude usually from 5 to 6.5, and depths below 70 kilometers or even closer, even shallower, and uh, very close to the volcanoes that can trigger them. There are two common ways to for, for earthquake to trigger in a volcano. The first one is static triggering. When the volcano is very close to the hypercenter, it is triggered by the static stress change introduced by the earthquake. Another one is a dynamic triggering when the volcano is far from the hypercenter and is triggered by the seismic wave. Among all these observations, however, the intermediate depth earthquake, whose depths from 7 to 300 kilometers have not been generated being linked to the volcanic unrest or deformation, and that's what we're going to talk about for today's uh, for our study. So methodology we are going to use is a technique called INSAR. INSAR has become an extended method to measure the earth surface deformation caused by earthquake and uh, volcanoes. The dominant error source within INSAR are atmospheric and decoration noise. Here uh, the left hand figure shows an example from the Jumio volcanic South American which is generated by the Lake Star volcanic photo. We can see the cumulative displacement here, where well, we can see some pixels miss are missing, it's because the decoration noise. And if we, if we click the single pixel here and shows the time star as the right hand side panel, and we can see the cumulative uplifting signal with some noise, which mostly due to the atmospheric noise. So we choose Northern Chile as our study area. On June 2020, a 6.8 earthquake happened in this region, whose central depth is 112 kilometers, according to the USGS. Uh, it later triggered many small, uh, small deep aftershocks, which we do not care too much about. So, in order to capture the surface deformation of this earthquake as well as surrounding volcanic signals, we process about four years of sentinel one alteration from January 2018 to October 2021 to ensure there is a lot of data available to constrain the potential annual or secular deformation. So this figure, this figure shows the old historical earthquake from uh, since 1976, where the GCMT was established. We can see as the, see the earthquake depth increase as we go into the slab. And the white and black dash rectangle box here shows our processing area. And uh, in today's study, we just focused on the Sukampa volcanoes here, which is about one can, over 100 kilometers away from the epicenter. And we tend to believe it's caused by the dynamic triggering. So here's our workflow. We start from the Sentinel-1 SLC images. We form the interferon ones by modulating bando spatial filtering. We generate the temporal, uh, temporal inter baseline temporal interferon one from six to sixty days, and use scaffolds to do the atmospheric atmosphere correction to reduce noise as well as suppress the signal effect. And then we use the stand software to do the time analysis. We unwrap in iteratively to reduce unwrapping errors and drop the uh, short drop the a uh, short temporal baseline interferon to reduce the fading signal impact and then do the sparse inversion. And then we later use the model fitting to time analysis to uh, fit the instant time analysis. Uh, we use a similar approach uh, in Iran earthquake to improve the cosine deformation. Here uh, we fit uh, time analysis with two different linear terms pre and after the earthquake event time with a constant offset. Uh, there are potential some cosine deformation introduced by the earthquake and also the signal effect. But here we just simply use two linear two linear deformation because the cosine deformation is very weak at this far distance. Uh, so we fit the pixel by pixel and then use the uh, and then reconstruct the deformation field and use this reconstruct deformation fields to do the volcanic modeling. 
uh, which were which used by the GPS software used the post cumulative information. So here is the uh, result from the succumb uplifting. We can see in both ascending and descending case, the pre uh, the before the earthquake happened, uh, there is basically no uh, signal except um, uh, topography related signal. And after the earthquake happened, we can see clearly uplifting cumulative information for the for both cases. And uh, if we see the time series is parallel at the right hand side, uh, this parallel shows the average time series of the of the black dashed rectangle, and we can see the green dashed line indicates the uh, earthquake event time. And after the earthquake event time, we can see the um, the clearly uplifting signal from background noise, and especially on the descending track because it's less noise is uh, less noisier. So what we do next is use uh, first use a single Mogi source to do the volcanic modeling. Uh, here show, shows the modeling result. We use two track data: the observation, the cumulative deformation, the modeling results, and the uh, residues. In overall, we believe that uh, the model fits the data well, and we got the uh, source depth at 10.4 kilometer whose 95% confidence interval from wells from 9.4 to 12 kilometers. And we also get the volume chain in this value. Uh, so that's our initial result. In conclusion, uh, our work suggests that volcanic unrest can be triggered by deep intra-step earthquake. And since the and since we we usually notice on the mega threat or the very small shallow volcano uh, earthquake close to the volcano. Uh, our work suggests that the, the earthquake volca volcano inter interaction might be more universal than we previously thought, and uh, the similar intra-step earthquake events should be taken into account into the future studies. So our next step is trying to determine the exactly triggering time while the GPS station and better constrain the triggering mechanism. Uh, we now we know it's uh, dynamic triggering due to the distance, but we need more uh, specific which dynamic triggering it is. Mm. And there's a GPS station close to the the volcano, and we want to use the GPS station to know the the lag of the triggering time, it, whether it is days or months. Uh, and finally, we may use different source models for the combat vehicles because currently we only use the MOGI, we want to use other sources as well. And that's all. Thank you for listening and welcome for any questions.